All right, it's an exciting day here at Dance Fish. I've got some uh, fish to show you. I've got this box and got these boxes here. So um, these aren't the main fish I'm getting. These are just uh, kind of the, the cleanup crew, if you will. Not that I treat them that way, but these are mostly Corridori's catfish in these five boxes. Um, I'm going to put them in the tanks, give them couple weeks to get the uh, tanks fully established and everything. I've done fishless cycling, but I still want to make sure I get some creatures in the tanks and they're good for a couple weeks. And then I'll get the um, all the killifish and things and the uh, different tetras and cichlids that I'm, I'm hoping to bring in from Africa. Um, but for now, let me show you what's in these. So, box number one here. And it's not all Corydoras, it's mostly Corydoras, but there are also um, some pencil fish because I want to get the pencil fish in the tanks and eating and comfortable. That way when I get the new fish, the killifish and things, that can be a little skittish to start with. Um, there'll be tank mates in the tank that are comfortable, so they'll make the killifish more comfortable. Um, so what have we got here? All right, standard albino Aeneas. Lots of Aeneas cats. All right, so more pencil fish. A couple are down in there too, so let me grab all the pencil fish out I can find um, real quick, and I'm gonna start acclimating them right now because there's a couple down in each bag. It's a little disconcerting. Okay, well, I'm going to float these and I'll be right back. It's the water temp here. We're at 68 degrees. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. It's It was 16 degrees last night here in Wyoming. All right, so what are these? Malini quarries, which uh, I'll be able to show you in a minute. <laughs> All these Malinis. Um, yeah, are blacked out. I think you can get a little view there. What are you? Malinis as well. Okay. Okay, great. So that's box number one. Um, I am going to get these guys floating right now and then we'll come back for box number two shortly. All right, box number two. Let's see what we got here. Ah. We have plates. Fantastic. Oh, I see why. We wanted to keep the heat pack. Uh, 69 degrees, 70 degrees, roughly. Yeah, that's that's decent. It's pretty good. All right, so we have more Aeneas. I like Aeneas. They're super hardy, super easy. They're a great beginner quarry. Um, heck, I've been keeping fish for years, and I still like them. And this is the albino variety. I just wanted to have one albino variety. Uh, they come from a more temperate climate, so they can take uh, lots of different temperatures. They can take hot, they can take cold. They're really durable, really good fish. All right, that's all the Aeneas. More red cherries, more cherries. Well, they pack these well. There's none down, which is nice. More cherries, more cherry. And then, as far as fish go, what do we got? Uh, oh, these are the skunk quarries. And I'll have to look up the scientific name, I know it. But I forget what it is exactly. Alright, box number three coming up. Stable went flying somewhere. Alright, let's check our temperature here. 69, that's respectable. 71. Sixty-eight. All right. 
Upper 60s is fine with me. Um, oh, great. So Hebrosis, these are cute. Just about, not quite full grown, but very small one. These are the uh, Wakonga Red Laser Rainbow Fish. I'm excited about those. I'm gonna try breeding those if I have the right sex ratio. More Hebrosis Quarries. More Hebrosis Quarries with black worms. Why are they feeding them in the back? That's just weird. That's real weird. Um, and more Hebrosis Quarries with black worms. I don't know why in the world you put food in the bag. The last thing you want is fish eating in the bag and pooping in the bag. Anyway, whatever. What do I know? Um, all right. Here's the Julii Quarries. More Julii's. More Julii's. I think there's a hundred total. More Julii's. And I got so many because I like to keep quarries in big groups. So I have 75 gallon tanks. So if I put about 30 good sized quarries in each tank, that's a good group. They're comfortable, they'll shoal together, and they'll be a, a good uh, addition to the tank and eat any of the food that you know makes it past the Achilles and stuff. Um, more Hebrosis. The rest of these are all Hebrosis. So, um, we're gonna go ahead and get box number three floating and we'll be right back. Two more. All right, box number four, two more to go. This one and one more. All right. I've got so many of these big styros around that I think what I'm gonna do when I'm done here is put these up on like our local, uh, our local, I don't know, junk give Facebook group. It's called Upcycle. It's like Craigslist, I guess, and see if anyone wants to use them for coolers for picnics and stuff because uh, that's cold. If you just put the heat pack in last night and now it's this morning, it's less than 24 hours. How is the heat pack cold? I don't, I don't know. What do we have here? Oh, I bet these are black worms. Let's check. Yeah, I can smell them. Let's check the temperature. Stuff. 68. 68. 68. Hopefully these are a lot colder than 68. Booyah. Nope, they're 69. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all right. We'll rinse them in a second. Right now, I'm just gonna get them in the fridge. In the beverage cooler, why not? What is that? Is that full of black worm water? Oh, no, that's that's a cold pack. Okay. We'll worry about that later. Okay, on to the fish. So, more skunks. More skunks. And again, I know the scientific name. I've just got to look it up. I've got it written down. More skunks, more skunks. They are cute little guys for sure. More skunks. Oh, Corridor's elegans. This is one you don't see every day. That's kind of a cool fish. Really small. Oh no. Oh, look at this bag. It's just completely, this is Malini. I'm gonna go float these real quick because the bag's collapsed and I wanna get them out quick. Um, more cherry shrimp. Yay. More Julia's, more Julia's, more Julia's. Well, they didn't short me any Julia's. Got shorted some other stuff, but not those. And more Hebrosis with flackworms. Oddly enough, that blows my mind. <sighs> okay, last box. We're almost there. Box number five. Okay, let's do it. These aren't like your itty bitty little Florida boxes either. These are these are big old boxes. I 
hate it when I open a box to put fish in it and there's an old crusty heat pack in there, so I always throw them away immediately. It's just a pet peeve I have. All right, what do we got in here? 72 degrees, awesome. 72, 73 degrees, that's great. Yeah, take a look in there. It's like we could not fit any more fish in this box. Um, and on top we've got Albino Aeneas, because we didn't have enough. More Molinis. Metes. Oh no, we got two on their sides. Oh, that's horrible. I gotta move fast to get them out of the back because they are struggling. More skunk quarries. I ordered lots of different kinds of quarries. They shorted me on like four more skunk quarries. But it looks like just about every species I got is some kind of skunk pattern. So we're gonna have lots of different kinds of skunk quarries. Um, <laughs> that seems to be the theme of the day. More skunks, more metes. I'm going to have to take really good care of these. Been in a box for like 14 hours and we have some going down. So I don't know what those are, the label's off. So some kind of quarry, I'll have to put those in a separate tank and identify them later. Um, and the label is off these two. How fun for me. The joy is of bringing fish in. All right, so. That's box number five. I'm gonna get these all in their tanks. Um, the way I do this is I just, I call it temp and tank. Some people call it plop and drop. So I put them in the tanks, I float them until the temperature of the bag equals the temperature of the tank. And then I just cut open the bag, pour them through a net and put them in their tank. It's, it's quick and easy like that. All right, so what I'm doing here is this container has a bunch of hydrogen peroxide in it mixed with hot water. And then this container is just hot water. So I'm just rinsing this thing out between species. Um, let it sit in the hydrogen peroxide for a little while. Rinse it out, and there we go. Now I like to use these for quarry cats. Um, this is just a, uh, a strainer, a plastic mesh strainer. I think I got it at the 99 cent store. Um, and they don't get their spines stuck in it, like the Canon Annette. So this is my weapon of choice. All right, so, uh, oh, hi. So let's go over and do some more. All right, so we've got the Mete in these three tanks um, out of 150 or so of them, 100 of them, I think. I think there's four or five that aren't gonna make it, but the rest I think will. This is my least favorite part of fish. Um, if you can, always get your fish from a local breeder, from a local hobbyist. Um, these fish, they go through a lot. They get, uh, collected up from the wild or from big farms. They get caught, they get put in a holding facility. They sit there for a little while, probably don't have the best care. Um, go to a wholesaler, sit there for a while, probably don't have the best care. And then they come to me. And it's my job to acclimate them, feed them, medicate them, and get them all ready for you so you don't have uh, a rough arrival like they can come in for me. But it's kind of the ugly side of fish keeping. I really don't like this part. Um, so if you can, always buy local fish, always buy captive bread, um, local sourced stuff. Um, it'll do a lot better for you, and it's a lot better for the hobby and a lot better for the fish. So when you can, do that. When you can't, sure, come buy them from me. Um, I'll have these patched up and healthy and good before I send them out. But if you can, local's better. But anyway, um, we're going to go into some skunk quarries here. Got quite a few of them. So here we go. So, so far I've got the skunk, uh, the Mete quarries, or the Molini. Yeah, the Molini quarries and the uh, pencil fish out. Now I'm moving on to the skunks. What I like to do is pull that out of the black bag, pour them into here. This allows me, how'd you go buddy, to see if they're stuck in the bag, first of all. But um, this allows me to 
check and see if there's any dead in there. There's not. There's an auto in there though. Hello, Mr. Auto Sinkless. Um, and then what I do is take this, pour them through it to get them into the tank. Alright, they're all in there. And then put them in the tank. There you go. Alright. Now we get the fish in and as little of this nasty shipping water in as possible. Okay, I already labeled that tank. Got to make sure I always label, on quarries anyway, always label the species on the tank and put one species per tank. Especially when I have like three or four that all look like skunks. Um, Malini Mete and uh, I'll have to look up the species of the quarry that's common name is skunk, I forget what it is. Acaris? Acuaris? Acuaris, something like that. I'll, I'll check it. But anyway, same thing. These all look pretty good. Come take a look at them. So, um, they all look decent to me. Yeah, good. Good, good. Okay, I'm going to get them out of here. Out of that shipping water. The moment you open the bag, um, you have to move quick. Because you want to... The chemistry, the water chemistry in the bag starts changing. Um, the moment you open it and it is exposed to oxygen. So I want to get them out. 